To make this dog toy, all we're gonna need is four strips of t-shirt yarn or anything that you think would hold up to a puppy's wear and tear. I think you could use blue jean, fleece, an old towel, maybe an old blanket. The options are basically endless. I haven't tried other materials other than rope and t-shirt yarn, and this is cotton yarn as well that I tried, but anything you have laying around will work just fine. They're gonna need to be about 110 inches long for this style of dog toy. You have the handle side and then the knot side, so it's like a little tug toy for your puppy. It's obviously gonna be much bigger with the t-shirt yarn. This is just a tiny version that my puppy plays with. But if you're using t-shirt yarn or fleece or blue jean or something a little bit bigger, it's gonna be significantly bigger in size by the time we're finished with it. We're gonna start by working on this little part of our tug toy and then we'll end with this part. So to start, we're going to lay out our pieces of t-shirt yarn. So this is going to be the middle and then we're just going to kind of estimate how far down we need to go. So this is about 10 inches off center. So if the center was up here, I'm going to start down here about 10 inches off center. And I'm just going to throw these tails off my table and put my longer tails down in front of me. And I am just going to put a knot right here. This is a temporary knot. It doesn't have to be very sturdy. It's temporary and we will be taking it back out. I am just knotting it here so we have a place for our work to start. I'm using four different colors so you guys can easily see what's happening. And I'm gonna try to explain this the best way that I can. I haven't tried explaining it to anyone yet. So this is my first time teaching it to anybody else. When I usually make these, I had this drop between my two knees and then this is sitting in my lap. But for this video, I cannot do that. So we're just gonna do it like this. And it's a little bit difficult with the long tails, but it's necessary. Okay, so you're gonna lay your colors out in like a T format. Kinda like this. And we're going to start, so we've got our four, one, two, three, and four. We're gonna start with our red, and we're going to start by taking our red and placing it over the green. Take our green and place it over the red, but also over the purple. Okay, and then we're going to take our purple over the green and over the orange. Okay, and you can kind of see what we're doing here. And we're gonna take our orange and go over the purple, over the red, and then under this red here in this little loop that was created. Over the purple, over the red, and under this red. Okay, now this is our setup before we tighten everything and create our knot. Then after we get to this point, we just kind of pull all four strings two at a time until it's all the way down to our temporary knot. And you can see it already starting to form with our four corners right there. And we are just going to repeat that until we have enough rope that we're creating to make our little loop that's gonna go on this end. Okay, so we went this direction the first time. This time we're gonna go this direction and we're gonna switch back and forth every time we make another row of our rope, alternating back and forth, and that will create our square knot. This one is twisted. It's kind of hard to tell because there's so many different colors, but the one that we have now will look a little bit different. It'll be more square. If you wanted it to be twisted, you would just keep going in the same direction every time, but we're going to alternate between clockwise and counterclockwise to get that square shape. 
So now we're gonna take our purple and go over the green. Take our green and go over the purple and over the red. Take our red and go over the green and over the orange. And then our orange is gonna go over the red, over the purple, and then under the purple. Then you can give all four of your strings a good tug until it comes down all the way to your first little knot. Okay. Here we go. And now we are going to go this direction again. And notice I always start with the one that's in front of me right here, no matter which color it is. Taking our red, we're gonna go over the green. Take our green and go over the red and over the purple. Take our purple over the green and over the orange. Then take our orange over the purple, over the red, and under the red. So over, over, under, and pull that all the way through. Okay, and that is our third little knot in our rope, and you can start to see it forming over here. This is what we got so far. And I'm just gonna keep doing that until I have about this much maybe of rope, but I will count them after I do them and measure them for you guys to give you guys a measurement to follow. So I'm just going to speed things up so you can watch it in fast motion. Going back and forth between which direction I start on. If you accidentally go the wrong way, you can just come back up here and pull these knots out and try again. I'll do one more and then I'm gonna speed things up. So over the green, I'm going this way this time. Over the red, over the purple. Over the green, over the orange. And then over the purple, over the red, and under the red. This is a whole lot faster when I use my legs and I'm not trying to film it. Okay, time to speed things up. Okay, here is where we're at so far, and now I'm gonna do the rest off camera and show you what we've got. It'd, it'd just be much faster this way. Okay, so here is what I've got so far, and I haven't counted yet, but I will. I'm also gonna use a tape measure. I just wanted to show you that when I fold this guy in half and pull down to check my tails, this side is longer now, so I'm just going to undo this knot 
and continue to make a few more knots on the other side of the of the loop and then make my loop my loop side a little bit longer and then we'll be ready to move on to our body side but I am gonna do a few knots from this side instead of the side that I was on which is this one over here it's done exactly the same the same way I just wanted to tell you that okay I just finished my loop portion of this little dog toy this is what we have it kind of looks like a rainbow with these four different colors of t-shirt yarn I have 28 little nudges of each color, but I don't know if that means I did 28 knots or what, but there's 28 nudges of each color. So let's measure it so we can see how long it is, and then you can have that as a reference for your doggy toys. You'll have to forgive me, I usually make crochet pattern tutorials. This is a little different but it used a type of yarn, so I thought, why not give it a go? We're looking at about eight and a half inches for our little loop, again, which is just this part of our dog toy. Now we are going to fold it down and make our loop, and we're gonna pair up the colors together down here. If your colors don't line up nicely, you see how mine just kind of fall into place next to each other? If yours are different, like if this green and orange were switched, just do one more pass on either end of your loop here and that should make them line up. So I'm going to pair up all four of my colors as best I can. And take these over there and these over here. It's gonna be a little messy to look at for a second. Now we're just going to continue doing what we were doing, but this time we're going to hold two strands of yarn. Two strands at once, pretending it's just the one. I'm going to squish this together, and then I'm going to kind of hold it in place like this. And I'm just going to, I'm going to take that one under these guys just to line up my colors because I really like what we have going on here and I'd really like to continue it with the pretty color matching. I never tried it like this before, so we will see how she does. Okay, now, put that over there. Now I'm gonna just do what I was doing. I don't think it's gonna work. Maybe if I take that over okay take that over instead that's better so we're gonna go orange over red just like that now we're gonna go red over orange and over purple okay purple over red and green and we're doing all of this while keeping our loop together. Red and green. And then our green is gonna go over purple, over orange, and under our little loop that we made. Over purple, over orange, and then under orange right here. I know it looks like a mess, you guys. Hopefully it's making sense though. Now normally when I'm not trying to video, this loop is between my legs and I can hold it between my legs and use both hands to pull the strings tight and it's much easier and faster and less messy looking. Okay, it looks a little weird because I kind of forced my green to go with my other green, but hopefully once we get going, it, it won't even make a difference. So now this is what we've got. And we're just gonna continue to go back and forth. So we're gonna go this way and this way, back and forth, alternating, until we get the full length of our toy. And we're just gonna use up the rest of the yarn that we have. So we're gonna go as long as our yarn will let us go and then we'll knot it at the end. So I'm just gonna keep going until I run out of t-shirt yarn. A 
again if you don't s alternate the directions that you go so clockwise and counterclockwise back and forth you'll get a really cool twisted effect which I think actually works up a little bit faster because you don't have to think about which way you want to start and I think it gives it a cool look too. I just really like how these are blocked but the twisted one would be more stair steppy. I'm just going to keep knotting these. If this is the worst video tutorial I've ever done, just, just let me know nicely in the comments. Put, put me down easy if you don't mind and I will stick to crochet patterns. I thought this would be a fun one for National Puppy Day and it will also be fun for Earth Day because you can use recycled materials to make different dog toys like an old towel or blue jeans which I do plan on trying a whole bunch of different materials around my house and see which ones work best. I normally have my computer plugged up so I can see what you guys are seeing right now and I don't have it plugged up because I'm downloading another YouTube video. So I am just kind of winging it and hoping for the best over here. So if it's absolutely horrible, y'all can tell me and I will delete it and try again another day. We'll figure it out, man. Also, while I'm sitting here just blabbing, I do want to caution you to never leave a puppy alone with a toy. They might end up tearing it apart, even if you don't think they would be able to. And then they might choke or eat some of it and get really sick. So it's best to just keep them supervised when they play with toys just so you can avoid any scares or late night trips to the emergency room. That can get expansive. It's looking cool. Oh yeah, this is a good one. Theo's gonna love it. That's my puppy. I'll pop up a little picture of him for you. My other dog can't play with toys because he just gnaws on them until they fall apart. So he doesn't get toys, but he's been more gentle since we got Theo. He doesn't want to tear up Theo's toys when he plays with them. Okay, I'm going to do the rest of this off camera since this is so awkward and it's much easier if I can hold my work between my knees and I will come back. We will knot the end together and look at our finished dog toy. So here's what I have so far and I'm going to do the rest just by putting this loop between my knees and having this pop out above my knees and working from there. It's just much faster. Okay, I just finished the body of my tug toy here. This looks really good and then this looks a little weird, but it's not ugly. It's it's just a dog toy. It's okay. Um, let's I was going off of my shortest tails that I had left and this is all of one of my strands of green that I had left and it would get hard to knot it if it gets much shorter so I'm just gonna go ahead and knot it together now but let's measure this guy for those of you watching at home six and those two little dots six and a quarter is how long the body of the dog toy is and the full length is looking at nine and a half, but if we go like this, it might be a little bit more. Right at 10 inches. Now I'm just going to knot the bottom like this by taking all of the tails at once and just tying them in a big knot together, nothing fancy. Now 
you want your knot to be up close to the bottom of your toy. And then I like to go back through and pull every single tail as tight as I can, one at a time. That just makes it a little bit more secure. Okay, and now I'm gonna take some scissors and trim our tails. These are from Warm Crochet, aren't they pretty? And I'm gonna trim just a couple inches. Ooh. There we go. And now we have our finished tuck toy. Theo is going to love this. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with me today and bearing with me while I tried to film a non-crochet tutorial. I hope you were able to make your own tug toy and your furry friends love playing with it. If you do, try this tutorial out. I would love to know what kind of materials you used to make your tug toy. So leave a comment below and tell me what kind of materials you used and how you liked the finished toy and if you post any pictures feel free to tag me on Instagram at a crafty concept. I would love to see them. Thank you guys so much. Have an excellent National Puppy Day and I will see you in the next video.